everybody. We find ourselves in Little Falls, Minnesota today on the farm of Dave Check, dairy farmer from uh, to the south and west of Little Falls, I think. Yeah. And uh, Dave's going to introduce family that work with him on the farm, and they're going to help us understand some of the background of what we're going to see in this uh, soil pit and other discussions that you're going to hear during the course of the day. So if you'd introduce everybody, Dave, and take their parts in terms of telling us about the farming operation. Sure. Uh, this is my son, Scott. This is Josh and Joseph and my daughter, Taylor, who all help on the farm, and, and we run the farm ourselves. Uh, my wife, Betty, works off the farm part-time, and she's working today, so she's not here. Um, I'm the fourth generation on this farm. These guys will be the fifth. We have a uh, run about 220 cows through the parlor on a dairy. I assume these guys kind of have division of labor sort of things. Yeah. Each one has more of some specialties, but you all share. Right. Can you... Uh, sure. Scott, you want to tell us what is your involvement so far and what we are going to see here today? I uh, help with the milking and most of the livestock, bedding, pen cleaning, all that stuff, and then with field work and everything else. Yeah, I help, um, I do the feeding on the farm, um, help with field, field work, um, milking, and do mechanic work on the equipment. Uh, I help uh, with the livestock side, uh, Scott said, uh, cleaning pens and cattle and doing shots, vaccinations, and, and then uh, try and keep track of all the crops and stuff like that. And planning for next year. Yeah, I help milk cows and feed calves. Well, very good. Um, so focusing on field crops is kind of, everybody gets involved in the nuts and bolts, if I'm gathering this right. But in uh, some other conversations, I got the impression that uh, you probably know more about what's done to support the crop and that sort of thing. Yes? Yeah. Joe, is that right? Kind of, yeah. Come right. up with all the bad ideas. <laughs> well, yeah, you've got a lot of things out here in place. And so yeah. why don't you kind of give us a brief rundown on what some of those things are that you've done this year in this crop? Um, as far as like what we put down? Or? Yeah, uh, row support and uh, side so dress we, or whatever. We, um, we used to just do kind of nitrogen and a little bit of phosphorus in uh two by two by two starter with the planter uh this year we dropped out the phosphorus blend fertilizer and uh that kind of opened some costs up to come in with a, another biological product and then uh sea crop a sea mineral product and then we also uh had sugar in which we normally did and then we uh came in with some boron with the planter too at we're always low on boron. And that was then, in the two by two by two. Yep. And okay. then the uh, carrier was a 32% uh, amthio blend for that. And that was all treated with a, a cetane, a carbon humic acid to okay. try and help control the leaching and the volatization. So. All right. All right. Anything anybody wants to add in that? The main thing, of course, we were here today was not only to understand some more about your overall program, of course, but because it's important, I wanted you to describe that to us, is that we wanted to look at root system development. And um, I'm not sure how it all started or who it started with as far as the interest in the curse buster and a different form of tillage. I'm aware that you've been running a, um, a Kuhn Krauss uh, accelerator for, I think, five years, yeah. somebody said, yeah. right? Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little more about that experience, whoever wants to jump into that, kind of shift our focus here a little bit to tillage. Well, and we were researching them, yeah, for a few years and kind of we're just playing with minimal tillage with our tandem disc and whatnot until we um, finally got a accelerator in 2018. And um, it, we noticed a lot of difference just going from that and cutting out our deep tillage and everything just using that once in the fall yeah and once in the spring um 
one of the huge things was no more picking rocks, I guess. Um, at least fewer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much eliminated a job there. And we've seen other gains by not tilling the ground so deep, um, just shallow with the vertical straight blades that um, some of our wet fields that were we had on the list to tile, we they even turned around a lot better there, but kind of heard about your tool and looking for the next level to get something that would penetrate deeper and not create a problem and, you know, do horizontal tillage. And I guess we seen your tool or Inez's did and you guys went to the meeting and kind of started going from there, I guess. Yeah. That meeting was, uh, I think I was at the tail end, right? <laughs> I mostly got to talk to the consultants and most... But um, so, uh, because it works deeper, was that one of the interests in it? In the current system? Yeah. The fact that it worked deeper and, um, of course, it didn't mix any soil, right? Yeah. So it didn't incorporate any residue. Did that represent a special concern, the fact that all well, the residue stays on top? Because our accelerator would do the same thing. We had it at, I mean, we had it at the just one degree angle, so it... It left a lot on the top, and we were used to that, and we liked that. Okay. Um, but the biggest thing, I guess, on the dairy is we got liquid manure tanks, silage boxes, and all that kind of stuff for compaction, where the accelerator, accelerator is a great tool, but it, you know, it goes down three inches, and that's it. So if we got a layer deeper than that, we're still with our problem, and we've seen your tool that we like the idea and that's what we're really after so okay so then um, you started actually experiencing it uh, last october is that right yeah. you rented a machine from a client further north here near mora and um, any observations after you ran it on fields last fall oh uh, we gave it a test on all different grounds uh we had some where um we had, uh, well, we usually bale our corn stalks, so that, but there was a, some left on the field, and we ran it through that. We ran it through uh, where we hauled liquid manure, and we ran it through that. We ran it through some, and then put the liquid manure on to see how it would disappear. And then we ran it uh, just on a couple of strips here where we're gonna do some testing today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where we uh, got our pit, right? That we're yeah. gonna get into. Um, it's almost... Uh, anticlimactic at this point we'd like to talk about root systems but on the video we're going to talk about it later right so um, at this point um, what kinds of things did you see you put it in a lot of different situations did the manure go on the ground e efficiently yeah it did we've got a uh, our manure pit is under our barn so it's a, with a slatted floor so it's it doesn't have a lot of water in it, and it seemed like where we went, uh, where we ran the Chris Buster first, and then we put the manure on, it seemed to leave a little more of a scummy uh, layer on there that, you know, the stuff that didn't want to soak in. Where, uh, and for that reason, we usually put less per acre on also because it's a little more, a little more solid or dense manure anyways. And uh, uh, otherwise, uh, for as far as the um, the way the ground looked, it, you know, it didn't look much different than be behind the accelerator for as far as residue or anything like that. So maybe we were, yeah, maybe a little more that it, that it left, but uh, the hair you know, really yeah. yeah, it did more with the residue. Yeah. The the harrow on the curse buster, you know, did more with the residue where the um, kind of mixed it up even more, I guess, but it left a nice finish, you know, just what we would be fine with, so. Yeah. When we were doing the dig earlier today, we saw that we could tell where the curse buster had run and the accelerator had also run before it and buried the pin manure. And then the, <laughs> the rotary harrow and the curse buster put it back on top again. And, and it's notorious for doing that. Yeah, it's not a problem. Nope. Do, you, do you feel you need to run row cleaners? We do. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. I want to thank you guys, the whole family, for entertaining this, for mowing down some nice looking corn. <laughs> he told me he was going to send the bill to Byron Seeds, right? Yep. <laughs>
That was their, that was their corn. It was their problem. <laughs> well, thanks again. On behalf of all the people that are attending, we really appreciate your cordiality and your willingness to entertain all of this. Thank yeah, you. and it's, it's been a real treat to have you out here.